welcome to today. Seems to be raining quite a bit. So it looks like sorting is out for today. So what am I going to do? Turn an attic into a storage space. Welcome to From Hoarding to Boarding. This is episode three. Turning your attic crawl space into a storage section. Let's go up there and see what we find, shall we? The attic measures 28 inches from peak to rafter. But as they say, first things first. This duct work is going through the wrong section of the rafter in the way of my ladder, so. I'm up here relocating a duct first, and uh, unfortunately I, I grabbed the wrong tape. I, I brought duct tape instead of duct tape, so uh, I hope this works. That looks like a good place to cut it. You know, the really nice thing about working on duct work is the air that it blows through. Of course, when you have cut everything, the only thing that remains is the wire. It is hereby separated. If you've ever worked in the attic and it has insulation in it, whether that puffy fiberglass or an attic blanket, which is basically fiberglass wrapped in plastic or ductwork that you're cutting and has fiberglass in it, you'll know that it's quite itchy. I don't mind the itching for a day or so. It beats the alternative, which is wearing tons of clothing. Now I happen to be moving a duct over, but if you're uh, not and you work in the deep south, like Miami, where attics get anywhere between 120 and 150 plus, I would recommend you cracking open one of these if you have the flexible ducts. If not, tough luck for you, sorry. Now, while I've made round two it's in the past, I think I lost them all because <coughs> I never got around to uh, installing this blanket of insulation. Now when I went to FIU for electrical engineering I took a few courses in thermodynamics and uh, I believe, I mean those were crazy times back then, but I believe I remember some course about heat transfer and uh, the heat if it sees insulation even rolled up like this in the attic it will dissipate and, and run in the other direction. I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. So I'm just going to throw these rolls over here and, and hope for the best. This one's partially unrolled. I better roll that one up. When I first moved in and was about 70 pounds lighter, I wired up these lights for the attic. Unfortunately, most of my work was at the opposite end of the house at the other attic entrance. The switch is on the other side. I clearly need some lighting up there, so what can I use? What can I use? What can I use? Well, look at this. It's a light. It's an x-ray light. It's an x-ray light converted to a slide viewer. But wait, people don't use slides anymore. At least not the 35 millimeter kind. So up into the attic it goes. There's my lighting source. Ugh. I apologize for the lighting in here, but that will soon be remedied. Maybe. Well, it's a little better. <clears throat> a lot brighter than I thought it would be. I'm a little upset right now. Seems I have to do some electrical work and uh, I can't find my tick marker. Now I've had this experience before and I usually go out and buy another tick marker. Uh, what's a tick marker? For those of you who don't know, it's this little device that goes beep, 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 whenever there's power. Very important if you don't want to get, you know, electrocuted. I'll shut off all the power, but better safe than sorry. 
I run into this situation before. I just go to the store and buy another tick marker. Problem is, at the moment I have five tick markers buried somewhere within my stuff. I'm trying to decide what I want more. To be electrocuted but have a clean place, or to continue like this. Yeah, I think I'll go for the shock. Later. Okay, after an exhaustive search, I found my tick marker. Or one of them, anyway. This one was in the door glove compartment of my car. Must have used it and just thrown it in there. I think I bought two since this one. This is a good one. Time to cut the power. Okay, let's check. And that's why you need a tick marker. There's still power there. This is method 2A. No power. Ow. <clears throat> Elbow. The rest of the attic preparation went off without a hitch. I cut half inch plywood sheets to 24 inches by 48, which was a comfortable size to work with and would fit perfectly within the 24 inch truss to truss span of the attic. My advice to those of you watching, don't do any of this unless you enjoy getting shocked, having your knees banged up, your head poked by roofing nails, and remaining in a hunched back position for extended periods of time. I apologize for my goof in episode 2 where I announced the upcoming episode 2. This video is indeed episode 3, Create More Storage to Store Less Stuff, not episode 2, Best Laid Plans of Mice and Men, and ironically, I intended to make a video of the organization plan, but my best laid plans were changed. Within the next three days, look for episode four, The Unstuffing. As always, please subscribe and thank you for watching.